Hi, it's Bill McMurdo here, and this is Emrys Podcast. I want to start really a series of messages, something that I've preached a great deal on in times past, and have not really been getting into it too much. In recent times, I've had other emphases, focuses of ministry, but I believe it's vital at this time, really at this time, considering that many ways this is a sort of end time thing, an end time matter. Um, and I believe it's so vital for us. And that is the subject of uh, Babylon and Jezebel. Okay? Babylon and Jezebel. And I really want to look at it because I believe these spirits uh, have assailed churches uh, and indeed nations all over the world. Of course, Mystery Babylon, Revelation 17, uh, chapter 18. We see that Babylon sits over the nations. And there's a real connection to Jezebel. You could actually say that Jezebel um, has been assigned to the churches, to destroy churches. And there are many spirits of Jezebel or Jezebel spirits functioning and coming against churches and ministries in the earth today. Uh, one of the things that I want to point out to you, though, is that Jezebel, in, in the references in the Bible to Jezebel in the Old Testament and indeed in the New Testament, are not about a spirit, they're about a person. Okay? We're going to look in Revelation chapter 2. Let me read these verses. He that, uh, it says, verse, Revelation chapter 2, verse 18, sorry. And unto the angel of the church in Thyatira write, These things saith the Son of God, who hath his eyes like unto a flame of fire, and his feet are like fine brass. I know thy works and charity and service, and faith, and thy patience, and thy works, and the last to be more than the first. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess. Here's the thing you always notice about a Jezebel, that a Jezebel claims to be a prophet. I want to say right off that if you've heard that Jezebel is not always female, that's right. Um, Jezebel spirits, if you want to call it that, Jezebel traits, Jezebel personalities, Jezebel characteristics, Jezebel attributes can all be found in a man or a male human. But generally speaking, Jezebel is a female. And the reason for that is that Jezebels promote uh, alpha female feministic ideas. They take the liberty that Christ has given to women way beyond what it should be, and it, it's no longer about, if you want to call it equality with the, the men, it's about dominating and ruling and controlling men, okay? So Jezebel, yes, can be uh, a man, uh, or a, a spirit of Jezebel can be in a man, but generally speaking, this is a woman thing. And here it is, he says, notwithstanding that thou sufferest that woman, Jezebel, now whether that was a real name or not, that was a name that she was given by the Son of God. And it says she calls herself a prophetess. A Jezebel will always claim to have prophetic powers, to, have, to be in the office of a prophet or to function in prophetic ministry. And will always be fortune-telling, you could call it. Okay, telling someone this is going to happen, this is, this is going to happen. And normally it's, it's a good thing. You're going to be wonderful. You're going to do wonderful things. You're going to, you know... Yeah, you're going to be a wonderful preacher or whatever it is. In other words, it's prophetic flattery a lot of the time. Okay? It's prophetic flattery. So, to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. I, I, I don't know that that's literal fornication. It can be. I've seen that in Jezebel's. But it also means fornication, I believe, of a spiritual nature that you are coming away from worshipping God and, quite frankly, normally worshipping the Jezebel, his or herself, uh, and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. And I gave her space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. 
You normally find that Jezebels have a, a, a grace period, sometimes a long period, that God gives them to repent of what they're about. And I've had the Lord say to me about certain people, this is their last chance. Now, um, if, they, if they don't take their last chance, in other words, to knuckle under and just be a good, uh, have a servant heart, be a good, uh, faithful, you know, loyal Christian, if they get back into Jezebelic stuff, folks, that's their last chance. Or what, I'm, what, what this is what this is speaking about here, because what, look what the Lord says, I gave her space. And he says, she repented not. See, Jezebels have a time limit on their activities. Okay? That's what we have to understand. And it says here, Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. Jezebels are headed for trouble. Always. And they very often spend a lot of time in bed, in a sick bed. I'll cast her into bed. That's the meaning there. I will cast her into a sick bed. Okay? Now that's a judgment that God brings to Jezebels. But it's not that God makes people sick or puts sickness on people. They step into that themselves. Okay? And it says here, and I will kill her children with death. Now, <laughs> that's grim. There's two ways of interpreting that. It's literal children, and it's also maybe spiritual children, children that the Jezebel has cultivated for herself. Now, it says here, in all the churches shall know that I am he which searcheth the reins and hearts, and I will give you, give unto every one of you according to your works. In other words, the Lord says that the judgment of Jezebels is for a, a, a notice of warning to the churches. It brings the fear of the Lord upon the churches. So, folks, we're not dealing with something light and trite here. We're dealing with folks, something that is really uh, quite serious in God's eyes. And there's a temptation, I think, for every believer who is ever functioning and moving forward in God, particularly when they start getting into leadership in ministry or, or, or functioning in a ministry function, that it's, it's, there's a temptation to use manipulation and control, which are witchcraft things. See, Jezebel's engaged in witchcraft. Now, that doesn't mean to say that they're engaging in witchcraft like a witch out in the woods is, a pagan witch. But manipulation and control are witchcraft. And the other thing about a, a Jezebel with the witchcraft thing is that witchcraft is a sin of the flesh. So what the, they start off really, I believe, in the flesh. They start using their wits and they start using manipulation tactics, flattery, things like that. Uh, and the Bible warns about that about a strange woman flattering with her tongue. And, but it then, it, gets, it then gets to a level where it becomes demonic. The, the demons come in and, uh, in effect, enable, equip, and empower that person to become far more adept at what they do and far more powerful. So you have low-ranking, low low-level Jezebels, which are just people, gossips, maybe <clears throat> busybodies, that type of thing. But it gets more and more serious until the Jezebel becomes very powerful in the sense that they cooperate with demonic spirits and they get more and more into um, Jezebelic activities. Now, what I want to do in this series, I want to look at a whole bunch of stuff. I mean, this could grow arms and legs because Babylon and Jezebel are a big, big subject. And you know, even in, here in Scotland, um, we've had uh, been dealing with stuff like this. We have uh, been dealing with the Kelliach, which is uh, the, a Scottish sovereignty spirit, a hag spirit, a goddess spirit, um, which comes against uh, the purpose of God for the nation. And we've dealt with that uh, in times past. I've preached on it quite a bit. But... You know, it's at every level. It's that national level, that global second heaven sort of level, but also can be the person sitting next to you in church. Because this spirit wants to stop the anointing, wants to steal the anointing, wants to stop the anointing, wants to stop churches being uh, cutting-edge ministries for God, wants to stop uh, anointed preachers being... Um, used, used by the Lord. So the Jezebel spirit, so important. 
And I want to look at just, there's a few things I want to look at just before I shut this particular podcast. And I want to do these podcasts as short really as I can. So I'm using something which I found very useful. Um, I've got a lot of books on this subject. And as I said, I preached a lot on it, taught a lot on it. But one of the good uh, things, resources I found was from a guy called John Ramirez. And he's written a book, Unmasking the Devil, and he uses these 21 points. He's got 21 points of a Jezebel. Oh, and he combines it with the Delilah, the Jezebel, and Delilah spirits. The Delilah spirit is the more seductive spirit, um, pulling people away, you know, the whole sed- seduction and deception thing. So we're not going to manage to cover all 21 points in this particular message. So I just want to cover a few, uh, and then we'll, we'll look at them over the next few messages. I, I, this is about Jezebel and Delilah, which I would say is low level in the sense of it's in your local church, okay? Um, and thank God if it isn't. But we, uh, we'll get into things like Babylon and the sort of more global principality, power, high-ranking devil spirits um, as we go on. But let's just look at some of the traits of a Jezebel. Uh, he's got 21 here. Here are the 21 Telltale traits of these two spirits, that's Jezebel and Delilah, for our ministries and our churches. Number one, bring fear. And that is to bring to, to, to cause fear in people uh, so that they don't cross the, the Jezebel. Okay? And of course, Jezebel caused Elijah to run. Elijah had done these wonderful feats from the Lord, for the Lord, and uh, yet Je- Jezebel put him on the run. So there's... Fear, because fear is the spirit, the nature of Satan. Satan is a fear spirit. His nature is fear. And when you get into Satan's presence, and I've been there, it's fear that you feel, not fear of him. You, you, you feel fear because fear is his nature. That's what I'm trying to say to you. You feel the fear coming off him in sheets. So that's number one. Okay, we'll look at the first seven. Number two is to attack ministers. Well, that's what Jezebels do. They attack true ministers of God. Number three, they attack the anointing and those anointed. Same sort of thing, but it's the anointing that they hate. Jezebels hate a true anointing. Okay, and uh, very often Jezebels have started off anointed, but they end up, in a sense, what they function as a counterfeit anointing. Okay, because they allow the, the powers of demon powers very often to overtake them. And their true anointing is stifled. So they attack the anointing and those anointed. Number four, they only do their own will, never God's. Now, no Jezebel worth her salt is going to, you know, say to you, I'm only doing my own thing here. They'll always pass it off as their own will, as God's will. But they really only do their own will, never God's. Number five, give the appearance of repentance, then they attack. See, a Jezebel can preach a good message of repentance. But they don't repent, okay? They give the appearance of it. They, they, they will maybe say, oh, sorry, I got that wrong or whatever. But then they attack. Because if you force a Jezebel into admitting she's wrong, okay, she'll come back at you with something else. Number six, a Jezebel needs to be praised and elevated. They worship themselves and get others to praise them. When you don't praise a Jezebel, she turns on you. When you don't praise a Jezebel, you know all about it. She falls out with you. She forces you out. She squeezes you out of her circle. When you don't praise her. And number seven, and we'll leave it here because there's another uh, 14 after us. They have a possessive love to destroy and control. Jezebels love to destroy and they love to control. What they cannot control, they will destroy. So these are the first seven traits. Go back over them again if you have to. John Ramirez was a high priest, uh, Satanist, the real deal, not a pretendy one, a lot of pretendy high priests and high priestesses, but John Ramirez was the real deal. He's a wonderful ministry, you can get him on uh, Facebook and YouTube and all these things on his website. And this book on Mass and the Devil is very good. So folks, we need to be aware of Jezebelic activity and Jezebels. We're not going to go around scanning people to see if they're Jezebels, and, and just be suspicious of everybody. That's not what, what I think we should be doing. Don't think the Lord wants that either. The best way to deal with Jezebelic activity, when you recognize, of course, 
is, is prayer, but before you ever recognize it. Because you may be dealing with a Jezebel, you don't know it. Is ask the Lord to reveal. And I tell you this, he will. He'll reveal as clear as you like. You may have to ask a few times in the sense that, oh well, you know, because Jezebel's main activity is to deceive. So ask the Lord to reveal. He will. And persevere so you can be absolutely sure. And then when he reveals, well, we'll talk about how to deal with that uh, as we go on. But that's just the first seven. In our next lesson, we'll look at more of the traits of a Jezebel, the telltale signs, as John Ramirez would say, that you can know if you're dealing with somebody who is not of God. Jezebels are not of God, folks. Now, I'm not saying they're not saved. I'm not saying they're not genuine Christians. They're not born again. But as a function, Jezebelic function, Jezebelic ministry, as you like, it ain't no ministry. Nobody is anointed to be a Jezebel. Okay? That's what you have to understand. There's no anointing of the Holy Spirit. There's no Holy Ghost empowering to be Jezebelic. What you have to do, folks, if you... And if you know that you've been Jezebelic, you need to be repent. Jezebels sometimes do repent. If you catch it early enough, if you show people and they've got a sincere heart for the Lord, they can turn it around. But folks, you need, we need Jezebels out of our churches. And we need to know how to deal with that. The Lord bless you, folks. Till next time.